Hi, kids, and welcome to VeggieTales. I'm Bob the Tomato. I I'm Bob the Tomato. Larry! Just a minute! Are you okay? I'll be right there. Whoa, excuse me. Oh, uh, Larry? Yeah, Bob? Over here. Oh, yeah? Um, have you been cooking? What? Oh, you noticed my new hat. Your hat? Yeah, isn't it the coolest? Um, Larry, you've got an oven mitt on your head. Oh, yes, they're all the rage. Simply everyone is wearing them. Really? Well, all the cool people anyway. Yep, but you can't see where you're going. Isn't that a little dangerous? Fashion has its price. Larry, he almost fell into a toaster back there. Oh, Bob, Bob, Bob. Don't you read Veggie Beat magazine? This is the look. Without this oven mitt on my head, I just wouldn't be cool. I see. Hey, that reminds me of a letter we just got from Dexter Wilmington of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Oh, you don't say. I do. Now, Dexter says that sometimes when he's at his friend Billy's house, Billy wants to watch this TV show that Dexter's not supposed to watch. Now, Dexter knows that it's a bad show, but Billy says that if he doesn't watch it, it means he's not cool. What should he do? Oh, what a pickle. You know, Bob. Over here, Larry. You know, Bob. I think we need Cordy for this one. I'll be right back. Um, Larry, watch out for the... Sink. Ouch. Are you okay? They didn't mention this in Veggie Beat Magazine. <laughs> you know, Dexter, while I try to get Larry out of the sink, I want you to listen to a story about three boys named Rack Shack and Benny who were in a pickle just like yours. That's right. Now, those weren't their real names. No, their real names were, uh, let me see if I can get this right. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and uh, Abednego. Uh, of course, nobody could remember those, so we took to calling them Rack, Shack, and Benny. Anyways, they came with a bunch of other boys and girls that Mr. Nezzer brought into work at his chocolate factory. Well, who's Mr. Nezzer? <laughs> we'll get to that later. Who am I? Why, I'm George. Anything that goes in or out of Nezzer chocolate gotta come by me. Well, speaking of which, it's almost 8 o'clock. Time for the morning milk delivery. Here comes Laura now. Well, she's my favorite. Morning, George. How are you? I hope you're feeling fine. I'd love to stay and talk, but it's almost eight o'clock and I haven't got the time. See you later. Because we work real hard at the chocolate factory. We start at eight and we don't get lunch till three. I gotta drive a truck to make a buck so I can say. You are in trouble. Your time card is a wreck. It's almost two past eight. I'll tell Nezzer that you're late and he'll take it from your check. Yes, Mr. Nunt. Oh, yes, we work real hard at the chocolate factory. Excuse me, Mr. Nunt, but I've got an injury. Now get back on the line. You'll be just fine. With all this work to do, we've got no time for sympathy. We use to be so happy. We used to laugh and run. Now there's no time to play cause we gotta work on it and it isn't very fun. I'm Rack. I'm Jack. I'm Benny. We work here in the plant. We'd like to take a break for goodness sake. But Mr. Nazar says you can't. <laughs> we all need a vacation.
chocolate bunny. Every day they make 14,638 of these little fellas. I'll give or take a few. Oh, yeah, Mr. Nezzer. Nebby K. Nezzer. Uh, but you better call him Mr. Nezzer. Now, Mr. Nezzer's not a bad man. He just gets confused sometimes. Why, his chocolate bunnies are selling so well, I, I think he's gotten a little big for his britches. And that's saying something, because his britches were pretty big to start out with. What's all this have to do with Rack, Shack, and Benny? Well, their troubles start when Mr. Nezzer makes a little announcement. Attention, little people! I have an announcement! This morning, Nezzer Chocolate shipped its two millionth chocolate bunny! To celebrate this momentous occasion, for the next 30 minutes, everyone may eat as many bunnies as they want! Bon appetit! Hey, boss. That's awfully nice of you giving away all those bunnies. Oh, if I could just see the looks on their faces right now. Hey, guys. I don't think we should eat any more bunnies. Well, what do you mean? Mr. Nezzer said we could eat as many as we, we want. Well, don't you remember what our parents taught us? We shouldn't eat very much candy because it's not very good for us. Shaq, our parents aren't here now. We're on our own. Besides, everybody else is doing it. Rack, Benny, listen to me. I know our parents aren't here right now, but I keep thinking of a song my mom used to sing to me a long time ago. Think of me every day, hold tight to what I say, and I'll be close to you even from far away. Know that wherever you are, it is never too far, if you think of to help us do what's right. If we remember what they taught us, it's kind of like they are here. <laughs> okay, no more bunnies. I'm doing it for my mom. <laughs> Me too. Well, that about does it. What do you say we pop in and let them show their appreciation? Oh, yeah. They're really gonna appreciate you, boss. Hello? Hmm. I don't feel very appreciated. Hey, look. They are lying on the floor like they're sick or something. Hmm? You mean I let them eat my bunnies and in return they all wanna play hooky? Wait, boss. Those three guys over there, they don't look sick. Oh? Hmm. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Nezzer, for your lovely gift of chocolate. Yeah, thanks! Everybody else is lying down, but you three are standing up. Actually, boss, I think the tomato is sitting. I'm standing. Sitting. Look, this is sitting, and this is standing. I'm standing. Okay, he's standing. What are your names, boys? I'm Shadrach. I'm Meshach. I'm a bumblebee. A Benny Boo. I'm Benny. We can use boys who know how to stand up here at Nezza Chocolate. How would you like to be junior executives? What's it mean? It means you have to wear a tie. 
Sure, that'd be great. All righty, Mr. Lunt, get them their ties. Right away, boss. Boys, I want to see you in my office first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Well, what do you know? Rack Shack and Benny did what they thought was right, even though nobody else was doing it, and it paid off. This time, anyway. But boy, were they in for a surprise when they got to Mr. Nezzer's office the next day. Boys, have I got a surprise for you. The other day, I was thinking about the Nezza chocolate bunny, thinking about how wonderful the bunny is, how beautiful the bunny is, and I thought to myself, I thought, oh, if only all my workers love the bunny as much as I do. I asked myself, why don't they love it as much? Do you know why? Because it's small. It's a little bunny. What they need is a bunny they can look up to, and I mean way up to. This is just a model. The real bunny is 90 feet high. My workers finished it this morning. Wow, that's a big bunny, sir. Mm-hmm. Since you're my junior executives, I wanted you to see it first. But this afternoon, everyone will meet the new bunny, and it's gonna be a beautiful thing when everybody bows down and sings the bunny song. Um, I don't think I'm familiar with that particular tune. Could you just hum a few bars? You know, I was hoping you'd ask. The bunny song is how all my employees will show just how much they love the bunny. How nothing is more important than the bunny. How they do anything for the bunny. And it goes something like this. The bunny, the bunny, whoa, I love the bunny. I don't love my soup or my bread, just the bunny. The bunny, the bunny, yeah, I love the bunny. I gave everything that I had for the bunny. I don't want no health food when it's time to feed. A big bag of bunnies is all that I need. I don't want nobody to come out and play. I'll sit on my sofa, eat bunnies all day. I won't eat no beans, and I won't eat tofu. That stuff is for sissies, but bunnies. say if someone didn't quite agree with everything in that song so they didn't um didn't sing it what would happen what's that over there that's the furnace what's it for well that's where the bad bunnies go let's just say in my mind if you don't bow down and sing the song you're a bad bunny you don't mean... But I'm sure that won't happen. It's almost time for the ceremony. I'll see you out there. Now this was a pickle. That bunny song was chock full of stuff they knew was wrong. But if they don't sing it, Neza says he's going to throw them in the furnace. Woo! Well, what would you do if you were them? I better hold that thought. The ceremony's starting. Thank you for attending today's festivities. It is with great pleasure that I present to you the object of our affection, your new best friend, the Bunny! Now it is time to bow and sing the Bunny Song! 
Hey, boss. Those three guys don't look like they're bowing. Hmm? Aren't those our new junior executives? I think so. Maybe they're stuck. Let's find out. I said it's time to sing the bunny song. Come on, guys. Sing the song. Everybody's doing it. Sing the song. They ain't singing, boss. Sing! Think of me every day. Is that the bunny song? No, I don't think so. Are you crazy? If you think of me, I'll be with you. Oh, that was beautiful. I'm going to be singing that song myself. As I throw you into the furnace, God sees them. Take them to the furnace. Jack and Benny will be right back after this short break. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Laddie, the part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. Laddie will be performing the traditional Argentinian ballad, The Dance of the Cucumber, in its original Spanish. Bob the Tomato will translate. Miren al pepino, Watch the bien cucumber. como se mueve, See how he moves. como un león, like a lion. tras un ratón. Chasing a mouse. Miren al pepino, Watch the cucumber. que suave es oh, movimiento, es como mentequilla like en un chango pelón. Bald monkey. Miren al pepino, Watch the cucumber. los vegetales, enviren a su amigo, como él quiere bailar, pepino bailarín, dancing cucumber. Pepino bailarín, dancing cucumber. Pepino bailarín, dancing cucumber. Baila, baila, dance, ya. dance, yeah. Miren el tomate. Look at the tomato. No es triste. Isn't it sad? Él no puede bailar. He can't dance. Pobre tomate. Poor tomato. Él desearía poder bailar como el pepino. He wishes he could dance like the cucumber. Libre y suavemente. Free and smooth. Pero no puede danzar. But he, he can't. Okay, stop the music. What do you mean I can't dance? I can dance. Well, what about Uncle Louie's polka party? Didn't you see me dancing at Uncle Louie's polka party? No comprendo. No comprendo? I'll show you no comprendo. Mom, Dad, look over here. Get a picture of me next to the cucumber in an authentic Argentinian garb. Okay, Junior, but we better hurry. I think the dwarves have your mother confused with someone else. <laughs> Say peas. Peas. Escuchen al pepino. Listen to the cucumber. Oigan su Hear voz fuerte. Como voice. un león. Like a lion. Listo a devorar. About to eat. Escuchen al pepino. Listen to the cucumber. Que dulce es su canto. How sweet his voice. Que sopla su garganta. Parece like un trinar. Escuchen al Listen pepino. Listen to the cucumber. Los vegetales inviten a su amigo como él quiere cantar. Pepino cantador, pepino cantador, pepino cantador, canta canta ya. Yeah. Escuchen al tomate. Listen to the tomato. No es triste. Isn't it sad? Él no puede cantar. He can't sing. Pobre tomate. Poor tomato. Él desearía poder cantar. He wishes he could sing. Fuerte y dulce como el pepino. Strong and sweet like the cucumber. Pero no puede. But he can't. Ni siquiera da un silbido. Can't even whistle. All right, that's it, señor. Come over here and let me sing you a song. This has been Silly Songs with Laddie. Tune in next time to hear Laddie sing. Bob is really angry. I hope he doesn't catch me. 
It's so hard to run with the sombrero on my head. And now, back to our story. Is everyone comfortable? Good. Rack, I can't move my arms. Ah, uh, Benny, you don't have any arms. Oh. I've tried to be patient, I've tried to be kind. Can you tell me what the trouble is? Am I losing my mind? Now I didn't ask for much, just one simple little thing. Didn't ask you to part the waters, I just wanted to hear you sing. I gave you hats, I gave you ties, I let you eat my buddies. And this is how you repay me? Come on, boys, do you think that's fun? But to show you what kind of guy I am, I'll ask you one more time. Will you or will you not sing the song? Well, you see, sir, our parents taught us to stand up for what we believe in. And God wants us to do what's right. And there's a lot of stuff in that song that's not right. So, we don't mean to be a bother. We hope you understand. But we cannot sing that song. I understand, boys. You do? Oh, yes. I understand that you're bad buddies! Now, if I'm not mistaken, that truck belongs to me, Mr. Lunt. Oh, but look, my truck seems to be full of garbage. Mr. Lunt, is there anything you can do about that? Hey, no problem, boss. Yeah. I sure hope that you were right. Huh? Mr. Lunt? It wasn't me, boss. I said, nobody bakes my buddies. Listen here, young lady. If you don't plug that back in, you're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever gonna stand up to me again! Oh, I was wrong. 
wrong to try to make you do things you weren't supposed to do. What was I thinking? I must have forgot everything that my mommy taught me. Can you ever forgive me? We forgive you. Oh, thanks. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? Well, you could sing one of our songs. Well, how's it go? You know, I was hoping you'd ask. It's why she tells me what I need to know. I got a lot of respect for that woman. But sometimes when I'm playing with a buddy or two, they're doing things that I'm not supposed to do. Do you go along? Even though the things they do are wrong. Mm -hmm. I remember saying, Stand up, stand up. For what you believe in, believe in, believe in God. She's the one to back you up. What you learned in church and Sunday school Just check it out mm -hmm. The Bible tells us what it's all about Oh, you know that's right So if you have a question, go ask your dad And he can tell you if the thing is good or bad You'll make their day Uh-huh If you remember what your parents say What they say They told us Stand up, stand up For what you believe in, believe the one to back you up. We'll stand with you. Oh, stand, stand up, stand up. For what you believe in, believe in, believe in. God. He's the one to back you up. You're back. Well, I still haven't been able to get Larry out of the sink. I want to get out, Bob. But it's time now to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today, and God has a lot to say in his book. Larry, you know how I feel about that song. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone, and now that our song is done, we'll take a... Hey, that's cold! As I was saying, it's time to talk about what we've learned today. Right, Larry? I'm wet. Right. Well, Rack Shack and Benny learned that standing up for what they believed in was pretty hard, but it was worth it. When all their friends were doing things that were wrong, Rack Shack and Benny remembered what their parents had taught them and that God wanted them to do what was right. In the end, God was protecting them, even in the fiery furnace. What did you learn, Larry? Well... I learned that doing something that you know isn't such a good idea, just to be cool, isn't very cool. I put an oven mitt on my head just because Veggie Beat Magazine said it would make me cool, even though I couldn't see anything. It didn't make me cool. It made me, it made me bump into a toaster and then fall into the sink. And now I can't get out of here. I'm going to be stuck here forever. And people are going to set plates on my head and I'm never going to get to go to the circus or run through the fresh cut grass or feel the ocean breathe in my hair as I pilot my nibble schooner Felix off the coast of our family home at Kitty Bunkport. Oh, at the end, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Click, click, click. Are you finished? Yeah. Okay, Larry, do you see that spoon over there? Uh-huh. If you stand on that end of it, and I jump onto the other end, it'll fling you out of there, okay? Okay. This'll just take a second. I'm ready. Okay, here I come. Oh, that's much better. Thank you, Bob. Bob? Bob? I'm in here, Larry. Oh, there you are. Hey, let's see if Cordy has a verse for us. Stand firm and hold to the teachings we passed on to you. Second, Cephalupians, Thessalians, Thessalupians, uh, Bob? Thessalonians. Thanks. Can I get out now? Not yet. Second, Thessalonians 2.15. That means, remember what your parents teach you and what you've learned from the Bible. If someone wants you to do something that you know is wrong, stand firm and do what's right. In our story, Rack, Jack, and Benny stood firm when all their friends were doing things they knew were wrong. So, Dexter, the next time you go to Billy's house, 
Maybe you could bring one of your favorite videos to watch instead. He might think it's pretty cool. It isn't always easy, but knowing you've done the right thing sure feels good inside. Right, Bob? Yep, that's right, Larry. I'd like to get out now. Well, that's all the time we have today. Remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Goodbye! Vegetarian, 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 vegetarian.